All right, I'm going to give you a quick tour of Ripley's wounds. So this is Ripley. This right here was one of her more mild wounds. It was, when we first got her, it looked like like guts coming out of a smaller hole, it looked like. Because her fur was just so matted, you couldn't really see much. You can only see like this big one in the top corner here. And uh, it was like, <clears throat> if you ever see Attack on Titan, you know how the Titans look? Like the Colossal Titan or any of those guys where you, it's just all muscle. That's what it looked like. It was like exposed muscle, but it was protruding a little bit. So we kept it really clean. Uh, here's a trick. When you have an open wound of any type, you want to um, keep it moist. So you would need some sort of like ointment, like something like Vaseline. Vaseline will work. That's what people used to put on, on wounds, but they're, now there are more um, medical versions of it. Like there's like a Neosporin gel, different sort of antibiotic gels, which is generally what we'd put on her. And uh, the only reason we don't have anything on it now is because despite how this looks on the camera, this is actually just like scabs. So we just kind of spray it and wipe it and try to keep it clean. But these are scabs. It's healing up fine on, on their own. Um, now this uh, is... I'm not going to go too into detail about this one yet in this video. But as you can see here, that is her actual bone coming through the uh, the cloth. This just now happened, so I'm trying to keep her from moving around. Uh, my girlfriend's going to be home in a few minutes, so we're going to change her bandage anyways. So I don't want to move her too much. Now when we do change this one... Um, you know, one of us, i it's always me. I'm the one who holds her, and Tiana's the one who changes the bandage. So what she does is um, basically she, you know, cleans the wound to make sure there's no, um, no infection. She uses peroxide on it, and then she cleans off the peroxide because you don't want to leave peroxide on an, on an open wound. You want, like I was saying earlier, some sort of gel. and uh, And then we put thick gauze on it and we try to pinch the the um, skin to pull it around the bone so it's a little bit closer and a little bit more comfortable to her it feels a little bit more like what an arm is supposed to feel like and uh, you know puts it in place because she's still instinctively going to move her shoulder now we don't want her moving her shoulder uh, because that's going to irritate her bandages and this is another important thing Oh, look, she's, she's such a, a calm baby. She's almost going to sleep. She's, um, uh, is, we wrap this over and under her other arm. We, uh, kind of experimented with it, uh, where we just wrapped it under her arm instead of over. And within a few minutes, it had kind of come in off. Now, this is a certain, uh, medical cling wrap. So it's not actually taped together with anything. You just wrap it and then it just sticks to itself. It's really cool. Now, this here her mouth this is the one i'm most concerned about because this although it, it looks terrifying when you when you look at it it's it's gut-wrenching and hard to look at but i think the surgery to that will be a little bit easier because all they really need to do is remove the bone um probably up at the joint and then sew the skin closed as long as everything is uh you know clean it, it shouldn't be that problematic what I'm concerned with is this here. Now, her jaw is broken. You can tell because her face is side, like her jaw is sideways, so it's broken like that. But the belt or something, I'm not sure exactly how it happened because I didn't see her when she was inside the belt. It, um, it burned her skin and it tore her skin. And I think that's part of what, uh, she might have severed her jaw somewhere. Now, we'll know more when we get x-rays. But this right here, like for example, she has a burned ear. Where you compare it to this here, this here is fine. This is the one that's burned. And it looked a lot worse too, but it's scabbed. So she's healing fine. And if you see the videos of her eating, she definitely wants to survive. She's got a strong will. And um, I mean, you can't really tell if there's any infections from this camera. But all her wounds look clean. You know, it looks like what normal insides look like. There's no uh, bugs, no weird discoloration, anything like that. So anyways, back to this. 
And we had actually, we were stumped at how to try to fix it. And as bad as it looks now, it actually looked a lot worse when we, uh, when we first got her home. And so we had to try to wipe up as much dirt and dried blood. It was mostly like crusted blood. We had to wipe up as much of that as we can to get to her fur so we could uh, cut her fur down and try to figure out ways of taping things together without getting anything into the wound as well as keep the wound clean. So, I mean, medical professionals, they know a lot better ways of doing this than we do. So we were kind of just, I hate to say it, but kind of guessing, but also, you know, doing a little bit of research. And uh, she had a Joker's, if you can see here. Now, my other hand is under her, and I don't want to disturb her by pointing. But if you follow the, the curvature of her, let's say, her ear from the bottom curve of her ear down to this line right here. I'll go real close to it, right there. That was a full-on slice. It looked like a Joker smile, and it sliced all the way up to her mouth. So what I did was I took a, a piece of tape, well, not like scotch tape, but medical tape. Uh, you, you don't see any on her right now because we, we don't need it anymore. Um, and I tried to tape up different portions of her face that are uh, separated. I tried to put tape or tape them back together just so they would heal closer together and be more likely to, to connect. But um, the tape wouldn't hold. So what I had to do is I had to super glue the tape to each, I guess you want to say, island of skin, of fur, and let it dry. And then I would squeeze them together to the closest one and then put another piece of tape glued onto these connecting pieces of tape. So it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a puzzle, you know. And I tried doing that here to the, the part right under her, like the front of her mouth. You see that tuft of fur that's separated with the back part. I tried to do that, but it kept tearing at her skin and the tape would come off even with super glue. So that's definitely something for the, uh, for the vets to deal with. All we can really do is try to keep it clean and, uh, you know, keep her in a sterile place. The room that we're in right now is a very recently renovated bathroom. So we turned off the water to, you know, to the bathroom, cleaned everything, wiped it down with the, uh, there's a certain, you know, certain types of disinfectants and cleaning solutions that use citrus. And a lot of bugs don't like citrus. So if you clean a room with citrus, it keeps the bugs out. Now, one of the main things you want to do with a kitten, especially, is you want to keep bugs out because if a fly gets on an open wound or even it doesn't need an open wound it can lay an egg inside its skin and create this thing called a wolf worm so a wolf worm is it's like um if, if there was a pokemon that was a maggot right if there was a maggot pokemon then a wolf worm would be its final evolution it's like a super maggot with armor and it's it's bigger than what a real maggot looks like it's terrifying. I saw one when I was like 10 or 11. Uh, I was volunteering at the Humane Society when I was a kid. One one reason why I fucking hate the Humane Society. They're an evil organization. They were going to kill her. They were going to kill Ripley. They said they couldn't fix her. Now this is over a week ago that they turned her down. And me and my girlfriend, no medical history between us, were able to keep her alive and clean and without any sort of infection, and thanks to the beautiful, wonderful people of the internet, we're able to raise money and get her surgery pretty soon. That's that's amazing. But uh, yeah, back to this wolf worm. It. I remember walking into an um, one of the operating rooms in the back of the Humane Society when I was a kid, and uh, right now we live on. Well, I don't, I don't want to tell you too much of You probably already know if you are watching this. But um, at the time, it was in Tennessee. And I went into uh, this back room where they were operating on a kitten. And wolf forms, they tend to end up in, in cats. 
their kittens' necks around their necks and their uh, their faces and their backs. And they had shaved this this kitten in this area, you know, around her neck. And there was just a little like like a line. It looked like a little red line. There was nothing bulging or anything. And I, I was curious. I was like, "What is? What is that? What's going on?" And the I don't remember who it was who was cutting into it. It was it was someone I didn't recognize. It wasn't one of the normal workers. But this guy, he took a scalpel and he sliced it along this line. And then this this it almost looked mechanical, like metallic or something. Like it was made of stone. It was unreal. It it, it was this, this maggot's lower half that started just worming its way out of this hole and it it looked like it was walking through a portal because it didn't look like it could have fit inside the kitten's body now i'm talking about all this look at this sweet little baby here how oh, she's just napping she is perfectly content just being on my lap hanging out and i know that injury looks really bad but she is not in pain right now we have her nice and comfortable and we give her treats and uh she's just really tough even when we change her bandages she doesn't complain she's a really tough girl but yeah the the wolf worm ugh, it i don't remember if, if the kitten lived or died but it was terrifying and disgusting it was so invasive you know i never really thought about how insects and bugs are just they're kind of like humans natural enemy you know more so than other large predators that we can see coming you know i think the larger predators we overcame a lot earlier than we overcame the the smaller ones strangely enough we overcame you know tigers by hiding in caves and learning to make fires at the mouth of the cave and if it gets past that somehow you got a couple guys with spears so it's not a big deal but uh you know a venomous spider can just crawl around all that stuff and then when you're asleep they bite you and then there goes your arm or whatever you know other sorts of bugs can infect you with viruses and um that's some, something i love so much about cats that people don't they don't take into consideration so much like yeah a dog is a man's best friend dogs are going to um you know protect you from an intruder they're gonna help you hunt they're gonna warn you if anyone's coming near your property uh the, the dogs are just they're useful for so many things but you know what a cat is useful for they take care of the little guys that will get us that we won't even see coming you know the the mice that have the plague fleas on them our cats will kill and eat these mice and the plague fleas will you know die in the process or they'll have to go somewhere else but our cats uh, will protect us from so many things and not even get recognition for it because people don't don't think about it or they don't see it. You know, it's not a, it's not something that's big and obvious. You know, like a, like a masked robber or something that a dog might take down. No, it's like a, it's a scorpion that would have stung you in your sleep that the cat kills, and you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and then you sit down on the toilet and you look down on the floor and there's a scorpion's body. It happened to me. Uh, like a year ago and i'm i'm kind of scared of spiders and scorpions i guess it's a normal phobia but they really freak me out and so that's one thing i like having about having cats around you know is that they uh they got your back and that sort of thing so anyways this is ripley these are her injuries i didn't want to uh we're, we're probably going to see and we if we can film changing her bandage but we're going to be on tiana's camera on a tripod and that way we were not we should we're not going to be finagling with the camera while we're film uh, while we're changing her bandage because it's very delicate work and we're not professionals so we have to really really try hard to and pay attention to make sure we're not missing anything or leaving anything undone uh, I've never really seen the bone come through like this um, usually it it's never done that before so we'll just have to be extra careful when we wrap it tonight to use extra gauze uh, you want to make sure whenever you have any sort of exposed bone like that to try and keep it 
well padded and well lubricated. And you know what? I think that's about it for now. I've already spent 15 minutes talking about cats and terrifying insects and things like that. So you know what? Thank you so much for your donations, everybody. Please share her page and her GoFundMe account and her Facebook page and all the memes that I've made of her and of relating to her. Because uh, I love this cat, man. She's so cute and she's so sweet. And I mean, yeah, she's injured, but she could still have a cool life as a regular three-legged cat. You know, there are plenty of healthy three-legged cats running around. And she can run. She can do a lot of stuff that normal healthy cats can do. Like, she's figured out how to how to run. She can climb. She climbed up onto this, which is her, her little house. Oh, there's her, uh, her snuggle cat inside there. That's her teddy bear. There she is. Okay, guys. I'm, I'm going to go. I got I to gotta get back to my girlfriend. Come on. Bye, Ripley.